We are going to start a new topic. I know you guys are super excited about rotation and angular motion and torque and stuff, but all good times must come to an end. Okay. Now, we're going to head into this concept um, of momentum. Now, before we get there, I want to remind you of something. You guys are familiar with Newton's second law. It says net force equals mass times acceleration. We call that Newton's second law. Sir Isaac Newton never said that in his life. Okay? He didn't talk about mass and acceleration. What Newton talked about was this thing that he called quantity of motion. Okay? And we have a term for that now. Okay? Quantity of motion. In this day, we call that momentum. Okay? Now, momentum, sometimes students confuse it with inertia. Um, if I say something has a lot of momentum, most people think it's a big object moving fast, which is which is good. Okay. Now I want you I want you to see some similarities and some differences between these. Okay. Inertia. This is a, the tendency of an object to resist change. Okay. Um, and so the more mass something has, the more it resists change. So the more force it takes to cause an acceleration. Okay. Well, momentum is also related to mass, but instead of resist change, this is sort of a measure of how hard it is to stop. Okay, how hard to stop. Now, if you think about the big difference here, if something's at rest, it takes a force to put it in motion. Okay, but if something's stopped, it's not hard to make it stop at all. It does that naturally. Okay, so an object only has momentum when it is moving. Okay, something has inertia no matter what. So momentum okay, is our quantity of motion. It depends only on mass and velocity. Okay? And specifically, it's the product of the two. Now, um, momentum has a symbol, and it's not m. m is meter, m is mass, but it's not momentum. Um, m, <coughs> or excuse me, momentum is a symbol with a lowercase p. Okay? And so the equation for momentum is p equals mv. p is mass times velocity, okay, which means it's in units of kilogram meters per second. Now, uh, there's a couple things we should point out about this. There's two ways to affect momentum. You can give something more momentum by giving it more mass or giving it more velocity. Okay? And it is possible that a horse and a mouse can have the same momentum, it's just the mouse is going to have to be running much, 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 much faster. Okay? It's a mass times velocity thing. The important thing to remember about this is velocity is a vector, which means momentum is a vector. Okay? And that is important. Okay, and here's what I mean. Okay. If we have um, some object, say some cart, thousand thousand kilograms, okay, and it's moving to the right at three meters per second, then it has momentum. Its momentum is P equals one thousand times 3 and that's 3,000 kilogram meters per second to the right okay or positive if I have another cart 1,000 kilograms moving 3 meters per second to the left okay it also has momentum but its momentum is negative 3,000 kilogram meters per second. So it does make sense to talk about a negative momentum. It does have a direction. Okay? It doesn't make sense to talk about a negative mass. You either have mass or you don't. Now, let's talk about that then. Um, well, that positive and negative velocity. Let's say I have a cart. I give it a push. Okay? And so I, it doesn't matter what its, its mass is. We'll say it's one kilogram. Okay? Um, or I just wrote 0.1, but we'll go with one kilogram. And let's say it's moving this way, 10 meters per second. Okay, and over here there's a big spring. Okay, and the cart hits the spring. Okay, compresses the spring, and then the spring pushes it back. So the cart ends up moving back this way at 10 meters per second. If I want to find the change in momentum, okay, it's just like anything else. Change in momentum, change in position, change in velocity, change in um, force, okay, change in momentum is always final momentum, or P, minus initial momentum, P naught, okay, well, my final momentum, okay, my, my momentum over here is negative 10 times 1, okay, or negative 10 kilogram meters per second, 
my initial momentum over here is just 10 times 1 or 10 kilogram meters per second okay so when I find the change I take my final okay negative 10 meters per second kilogram meters per second minus my initial positive 10 and I get a negative 20 kilogram meters per second okay so don't think that because these are opposite they switched because their opposite had a very big change now consider that as opposed to a cart that I don't know instead of hitting a spring it hits a wall and it sticks to it so it goes from 10 meters per second to 0 meters per second okay if you go from 10 meters per second to 0 meters per second then your change in momentum if you're 1 kilogram mass is just negative 10 kilogram meters per second it's only half as big okay so you do have to pay attention to the velocity before and after a collision now let's talk about Newton's second law again I said Newton never ever said net force equals mass times acceleration in his life instead he did things in terms of momentum mass and velocity well let's take a look at this what is acceleration acceleration is meters per second per second okay mass is kilograms so what I have is net force okay in terms of units that's kilograms meters per second squared compare that to momentum which is kilogram meters per second what's the difference the difference is seconds the difference is time okay so instead of saying net force is mass times acceleration okay I'm gonna multiply this by time and I'm gonna have this idea of net force times time the time over which a force acts right this quantity is called impulse okay now if I multiply one side of this equation by time I multiply the other side by time too and we'll talk about what that is but impulse okay you're gonna do a lab where it asks you to calculate impulse and so impulse is force times the time over which that force acts now um, you're actually gonna be collecting data and so you're gonna have a force that comes up and peaks like this you're gonna have a force versus time graph um, and it's might look a little bit different but essentially like this right here's force okay this is zero this is some non-zero force X don't know what it is okay if you want to find the impulse then what it's gonna have you do is it's gonna say okay find your mean force and so you highlight this section of the graph and you do statistics and you find a mean okay okay so that's your force how do you get your time interval well it's the time from here to here so if this is 1.04 seconds and this is 0.8 seconds then your time interval is 0.24 so you take your mean force times your time interval to get your impulse okay now you guys are gonna go ahead and do this lab and you're gonna learn about the impulse momentum theorem um, but I want you to be familiar with that so a couple things just to keep in mind okay impulse equals force times time and momentum equals mass times velocity okay? and the lab you guys are gonna do you're gonna look for a relationship between impulse and momentum okay um, the lab handout has some pretty good step-by-step -step directions if you get stuck on anything you can come ask um, but um, after we do this lab I will put up a video that kinda walks through it a little bit as well okay Good luck.